Dear students, this is our fourth lecture of heterocyclic chemistry, and uh, today we will discuss the nomenclature of heterocyclic compounds. And today we will discuss about their trivial names, the names which are also called common names. Now let us quickly start with our today's lecture. So, the names, these names, the trivial names, they were assigned uh, to these heterocycles. Even when their structural identification was not done, means even just when they synthesized a new compound, they found some new properties of that compound. Even they had no structural information about that co that compound, so they gave them a name. So that names are called uh, trivial names. Now, as uh, I, as I have said that the names were given even uh, before their structural determination, so these names they does not provide any information about their structure. Info structure, so it does not tell us about uh, means from common name or from this trivial name we cannot tell anything about the structure of that compound because there are no rules by which the names were assigned, unlike uh, IUPAC names. But somehow these names are also quite important and one should also learn these names because some of the trivial names of some compounds they have been recognized by IUPSC, IUPSC and their names are retained in the fusion nomenclature so this is a second second way by which we can name these fused heterocycles so when we will name them we need the help of these trivial names because these has been retained by IUPAC is a IUPAC. The typical example is phenol. Phenol is not a IUPAC name, but it is a common name. But now IUPAC has accepted that name phenol, so which did that name is more popular. Now let us quickly start uh, some of these compounds that I will show you on the screen. You are already aware. Some will be new. So there is no logic behind the name of these compounds. You just have to remember their names, and when you keep learning them when they come appear again and again in front of you and you know their name only then we can learn so this compound this is all of you might be very familiar with this this is pyrrole its trivial name is pyrrole similarly this compound if instead of nitrogen we have oxygen this compound has a name furan so this compound you are familiar with already you know this compound similarly this when we have a sulfur instead of oxygen, its name is thiophene. So these compounds, most of you have done in your uh, graduation classes. So these are you are quite familiar with these compounds. Similarly, now if instead of sulfur or oxygen we have selenium, then it is called selenophene. Okay, so this is its uh, trivial name. Now when we have two heteroatoms, NH and N, its name is pyrazole. pyrazole so this this is a quite important compound so please do remember its name because we will be using we will be studying this compound when we will do their uh, synthesis their chemical properties so you must know its name pyrazole now let us see the next compound now this is a similar to the earlier compound but now it is a different isomer because night the position of second nitrogen has been changed it is called imidazole so it is important please remember this name imidazole earlier i showed you it was pyrazole now this is imidazole this compound is called isooxazole it is also important so please remember you have to remember their names there is no logic you just have to remember now this you are quite familiar with this compound many times you have done its property you have compared its basic properties pyridine this is pyridine so its name pyridine is more popular now this compound in, in which we have two nitrogen atoms in the ring this is called pyridazine okay this is also very important you have to remember this pyridazine now the next compound that I have shown on your screens it is pyrimidine so quite important compound pyrimidine purines and pyrimidines are the bases of which are present in DNA so this is your pyrimidine now this is pyrazine so these are three structure isomers or three isomers of 
these compounds in which we have two nitrogens in a six membered unsaturated ring it can be pyridazine one two position one three position pyrimidine and one four position it is called pyrazine so please remember all these compounds these are quite important now this compound is called pyran its name is pyran oxygen containing compound and it 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 has a saturated carbon this so this is second position we can also write it 2h isomer 2h pyran next this compound in which two rings they are fused such type of compounds they are called fused heterocycles now in in this compound two five membered rings they are fused and nitrogen is common between two rings so its name is pyrolyzine we will also learn how to name them systematically this we will do under fusion nomenclature in our next lecture but its trivial name is pyrolyzine now this this you are quite familiar in this structure a five membered heterocycle is fused with a benzene ring this compound is called indole so you have already came across this compound in your bsc it is indole now this isomer this is isomer of indole it is called iso indole now uh, the five membered heterocycle containing nitrogen is fused with a benzene ring this is indole this is iso indole similarly if we have phosphorus here then it is called phosphindole so it is indole now just when we have a phosphor so we have written it phosphindole now this compound is called indazole so as i have already mentioned there is no logic behind how they have been named so their names are common now it it, it their names have become famous so it is called indazole and iupsc has retained them in its nomenclature so these are quite important when we will study the fusion nomenclature of fused heterocycles all these heterocycles here these are fused heterocycles in which two rings they are fused with one another the second compound this this is called isobenzofuran so this was furan this was benzene and it is iso uh, isomer so it is called isobenzofuran next let us see yeah this compound is called indolizine now it in this nitrogen is shared by both the rings and five membered ring is fused with a six membered ring it is indolizine now this is purines as i said these are the second part of the bases present in dna they are purines and pyrimidines so heterocycles they are quite important our dna is made up of this type of compounds purines and pyrimidine that i have already shown in my previous slide so this is called purine a five membered heterocycle is fused with a six membered heterocycle and there are four heteroatoms in this compound so these are purines now this you are familiar with this compound this compound is called quinoline this you have studied in your graduation classes this is quinoline now this is a second isomer it is called isoquinoline now it varies by the position of nitrogen now in this compound a six membered heterocycle is fused with a benzene ring so it is quinoline it is isoquinoline now you can guess its name it will be phosphenoline just to indicate phosphorus it is phosphenoline so these compounds are those compounds in which a six membered heterocycle is fused with a six membered benzene ring now let us see the next compound the name of this compound it again comes in that category two six membered rings they are fused it is thalazine P H T H A L A Z I N E thalazine, or, or you can we can you can say thalazine. Now it is the second isomer, so this is quinazoline. Its name is quinazoline. So you have to remember these names. So it is a little bit tough task, but you have to remember because we use all these names when we will study their fusion nomenclature of fused heterocycles. So it is quinazoline. this compound is called sinoline 
this is the sinolene so these are very rare but some are quite important that you must learn these are uh, not so common but it is better if you learn uh, this is quinoxaline quinoxaline this compound is called quinoxaline this compound in which nitrogen is shared between these two rings this is quinolizine its name is quinolizine as i have said there is no logic as i am repeating again and again there is no logic behind why it is called quinolizine it is its trivial name but we have to remember these names because these are important compounds these are pharmaceutically and there are many other applications of these heterocycles it is a very wide subject of chemistry mostly 80% or we can say 60% of compounds they are heterocycles organic compounds they are heterocyclic in nature even in our blood hemoglobin is a heterocyclic compound so this compound is called 2h chromine 2h i have used because at position 2 it is a saturated carbon so it is shown by indicated hydrogen this is called indicated hydrogen it is the second isomer of chromine it is 4h chromine because now the saturated position carbon is at position number 4 it is 1 it is 2 it is 3 and it is 4 so saturated carbon is at 4 so it is called 4h chromine now this is isochromine now if oxygen is at this position it is called isochromine and it is you can guess 1h isomer because the numbering will start from here 1 2 so there are rules how to number these fused heterocycles so please go through these rules you can get from internet iupsc rules but i will also discuss when i will discuss the fusion nomenclature of these compounds how to number these compounds so the numbering starts from here so it is 1h and it is iso isomer so it is 1h isochromine so these are structural isomers now this will be at third position we have saturated carbon it is 3h isochromine so this is its trivial name now let us see the next compound its name is 1,8 naphthyridine this compound is 1,8 naphthyridine this compound is called pteridine or you can say petridine or pteridine anything so generally it is up to you how you pronounce it now this this is important it is called carbazole now you can see it is a fused compound in which three rings they are fused two six membered rings they are fused with a five membered ring so it is carbazole and this compound is called beta carbolin it is again a three membered fused uh, not three membered it is a fused heterocycle containing three rings it is beta carbolin now this compound is called acridine its trivial name is acridine again three uh, six membered rings they are fused with one another and the heteroatom is nitrogen it is acridine this compound is called phenazine in which we have two nitrogens it had only one nitrogen it has two nitrogen it is phenazine this isomer is called phenanthridine its name is phenanthridine this is another possibility by which we can fuse these three six membered rings and it also contains nitrogen so it is heteroaromatic compound it is phenanthridine this compound is called xanthine so three six membered rings they are fused and we have oxygen in the middle uh, ring so it is xanthine uh, the name of now it is another uh, configuration by which we can fuse these three rings it also contains two nitrogen so it is heterocyclic compound so its name is pyrimidine so all these compounds they are quite important this isomer is uh, 110 phenanthrolene okay 
we have another possibility this is called 17 phenanthrolene this is 110 phenanthrolene this is 17 phenanthrolene the numbering starts from here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and here comes the 10 so 110 phenanthrolene it is 2 it is 3 it is 4 so it is 5 it is 6 it is 7 it is 8 it is 9 and it is 10 so it is 110 phenanthrolene this isomer is 17 phenanthrolene so these are isomers of phenanthrolene so dear student that is all for this lecture so i had nothing to explain to you this is just information that i want to pass on to you that these were the compounds and i tell you their trivial names so you have to remember these compounds names uh, you just have to remember there is no logic but next in the next lecture we will be discussing fuso nomenclature there we will use these trivial names so these are really quite important so thank you very much for your kind attention please do subscribe my channel and